The free version of Generate Blocks 1.8 Alpha has just been released, and this is an absolutely incredible enhancement to the Generate Blocks system. There are new features, quality of life enhancements, and almost everything I had left to complain about inside Generate Blocks has been completely erased. In this video, I'm going to show you my five favorite features that have been included, but of course, I will share with you the entire changelog as well as links where you can go download the alpha and play around for yourself. That's enough waffling. Let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at some of these brand new features. Now, one of the hardest things to wrap your mind around when you start using Flexbox are all the alignment controls. And just when you think you figured it out, you change your flex direction and all of those controls reverse. This is something that pros like Kevin Powell even get messed up inside of their videos. You definitely have to use trial and error. But with the new Flexbox alignment matrix inside Generate Blocks 1.8, those problems are a thing of the past. We now have a visual way to align our content. Let's take a look at how that works. I'm gonna go ahead and change the display from default to flex. And once we do that, we can see we now have these new alignment controls. Here we have a visual representation of all the different places we could place this content. By default, it's in the top left, but we could easily change it to bottom right, top right, center, center, you get the idea. And you can see as I click these different things, it's corresponding to all of the alignment items over here on the right hand side. As we change these, they update in real time. And if we change the flex direction, it goes ahead and updates everything the way it should be. This makes for a much more visual way to align all your content, which I know is gonna be a welcome upgrade to everyone who uses Generate Blocks. In the past, the spacing component only gave us the option to use pixels, M, or percentage. But in the 1.8 release, we're now able to use RIM, VH, VW, and CH. They've also rearranged all the padding and margin settings to give you a more visual indicator of which ones you're changing. Let's go ahead and take a look at how that works. Inside the same page, we'll scroll down here to the spacing dialog. In it, you can see that all the values have been rearranged to give you a more visual indicator of which things you're changing. So we can see this is the top padding, the bottom padding, the left, and the right. The same goes for margin, and of course, you can lock these values to keep them consistent. And if you pull down the drop-down menu here, you'll see we still have pixels, M's, and percentages like we did before, but now we have RIM, VW, VH, and CH. All of this gives us a lot more control and allows us to make more accessible websites. When I first installed the 1.8 version, I was so excited to see that RIM was available for typography. I went ahead and made a video and published it right away before I realized there was actually a lot more to it. We can now use text values, which opens the door to things like clamp, calc functions, and even CSS variables. Now these are a little bit more visual, so let's jump into the builder and show you how it works. Here for this headline, you can see it's already just defaulted to 60 pixels, which is set up in my theme as the default. But if I click in here and paste in a clamp function, you can see it's automatically updated. It's now using clamp to show a two rim headline at smallest device sizes and a three rim headline at bigger device sizes. This means you can use fluid typography inside of generate blocks by using these clamp functions. If you're looking to learn a little bit more about clamp, there are calculators online that will help you figure out all these things. But what I'm even more excited about is the introduction of CSS variables. I've gone ahead and already set up one for a font size medium. And when I type that variable into the dialog here, you can see this automatically updated inside the editor. Now, CSS variables deserve a dedicated video on their own. They're really, really powerful for creating tokens for different font sizes, padding, spacing, border radius, and all kinds of things that help make your site more consistent and more maintainable over time. So I will be doing some more content on that shortly, but just know this is gonna make a huge improvement to the consistency of the websites you're building here inside of Generate Blocks. You've actually been using CSS variables this whole time inside of your Generate Press theme. All the global colors are set up through CSS variables, and that's what gives you the ability to change the colors in one place and have them update across the entire site. So if you're new to CSS variables, this shows you how powerful it is. It gives you a single source of truth to be able to change things globally across the entire website. Now we're gonna be able to do that with things like typography and spacing like I just mentioned. Now this change might not sound as exciting, but it's something that's really gonna speed things up and save time for you. 
I'm sure with the new Flexbox controls, you've noticed that sometimes you'll be putting in all your different blocks and realize you need to wrap some things inside of a container for different alignment or spacing options. To do that before, you would have to add a new container and then drag and drop everything in. Back when I was using Oxygen, I loved the feature that allowed you to right click an element and wrap it inside of a div. And that's exactly the concept that Generate Blocks has brought in with this new add to container feature. Let's jump in and take a look at a real life example of how that might work and how it's gonna save you some time. Here inside this setup, I have a blog post card layout. At the bottom, I have the author name and date. And what I really wanna do is put these next to each other side by side. So before I would have to drag in a new container, drag all these elements in and then align them. But now I can simply select both of these elements by holding shift and press this add to container button. When I do that, it's put both of these elements inside the container. Now I can go ahead and change the display to flex, put space between, and I've already got that set up. This seems like such a small thing, but it's a huge time saver because we end up needing to wrap things inside of a container quite often. Now out of all the things people complain about inside the interface of Gutenberg, the list view has got to be at the top of that list. Everything comes in with a default title of the name of the block, and when you have a huge page full of multiple sections with maybe dozens or even hundreds of blocks inside, it's almost impossible to organize and find the things you need. Well, Generate Blocks has attempted to solve this by giving you the ability to add new labels to everything inside the list view. Things like headlines and buttons automatically get a name inside the list view based on the text that's inside of them, but things like containers, grids, or query loops can be manually named. Let's take a look at how that works. Here with the list view open, you can see that things like blog post title, where I've typed in blog post title, have already been added. Same for my name and the date. Of course, this only works on the generate blocks blocks and not the default Gutenberg ones. But if I change this to Kyle's post, you can see it's automatically updated in real time here inside the list view, which is gonna make this so much easier to find things. But of course, we need the same kind of idea for all of our columns and grids and containers. You can see I've already named these. What you do is select the container you wanna name, scroll down on the right-hand side to advanced, and here under block label, you can go ahead and give this a label. So we could just call this hero, and it's automatically updated in real time. I've called this wrapper, but we could change it to inner wrapper. And this is gonna make it so much easier to find things inside of a very busy, big page that has lots of containers inside of it. Of course, I wish we could double click in here and change the name, but at least now we have the option to rename things, which is a huge welcomed improvement inside the Gutenberg editor. Now, these are just five of the new features and upgrades inside Generate Blocks 1.8, but there are actually a lot more that ship along with it. Down in the description below, I've left the entire change log as well as a link to go download the new alpha version of Generate Blocks. Keep in mind, this is an alpha release. There probably are bugs and fixes that are gonna need to be done throughout the testing phase. So you only wanna use this inside sandbox sites and not inside of one of your live production sites. Knowing how Generate Blocks typically does things will be in alpha and beta for probably about a month before a full release, but this gives us the opportunity to play with this and see how we're gonna use all these new features. Now these were my top five, but I'm curious to know which one of these features are you most excited about? Go ahead and leave a comment down below and let me know what you're most looking forward to, and I will catch you inside the next video.